Hi, my name is Dave Sankey, and I'm going to, uh, <laughs> like to start off weird. I'm going to show you how to set up a program in Vexcode Blocks uh, with only events, no forever loop, right? We're going to control our robot with just events. Conceptually, this is a little bit easier for my kids. Um, so, I just want to show you how, uh, how this would work. Um, so first we need some motors. I'm going to do our standard clawbot. I don't like to use the drivetrain um, because I don't. Because once you set up motors on a drivetrain, you can't read their encoders or some other things that you can't, you know, control those motors individually. Like if you want to do point turns, you just can't do that. So I'm just of the habit of always doing, uh, always not using the drivetrain, I guess is what I want to say. Be sure you reverse your right motor, unless your motors are somewhere else where you have to do some other reversing thing. Um, I'm going to do this claw bot style. So let's put our arm in port 10, and I'm going to call it up and down. And if the actual claw bot is reverse that, then reverse that. But I don't have one here. Don't sue me uh, otherwise. So I'm going to call those directions up and down. It's really nice that you can name those uh, directions. That's our arm motor. And we'll have our claw motor in 11. Again, going claw bot style, and we'll call this, I think this one's closed, and this one is open. So as you're setting that direction, you're just telling the claw to close or open instead of just saying forward or reverse. This makes a little more sense. Nice that they added the option in there. Again, if that's wrong, don't, don't haterate on me. Just, um, just switch it up in your code. In other words, when you download the code to your bot, if open closes and close opens, just reverse the motor. I'm not sure which way it is. I can figure it out. Uh, we also need a controller controller. And this is all my bot's going to have. I'm not going to you program any of the buttons here. You can do that, but it's nice to be able to do some stuff off to the side. Uh, if everything's over here in your code, then you'll be able to apply two motors to a button easily or something like that. So I just like to leave that alone. Okay. You can still have your when started blocks. You could use that to set velocities, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, when you look at your controller, and on the actual controller, there's a little diagram right here. This is axis A going up and down here, and this is axis D going up and down there. Okay, so axis A is the left motor. So when controller axis A is changed, Um, you need to set the velocity first. I'm seeing a few of these on the forum where they're doing it in the opposite order. You always want to set the velocity first before you spin the motor. So when A is changed, well, you want to set the left motor to go that speed. So set the left velocity to control our A's position and then spin it forward. So this is all you need to do to map up and down on the left stick to that left motor. That's it. Okay, the up and down in the controller reads from negative 100 to 100, and even though we're spinning it forward, when you spin it forward at a negative velocity, it will go reverse. It's like magic. Okay, so that's all you need to do for that. So, you would do axis D for the right. Okay, so if I downloaded this to my bot, my left and right stick would now move the bot around. Pretty awesome, right? Um, so that's done. Let me uh, close this now. Okay, so let me set these over here out of my way. We still have our one startup block. I'm going to use that in a little bit. Um, we have some buttons, right? We want buttons to do things too. So let's say L up and L down. Now, these blocks have the buttons here. And over here, they have pressed and released. So when you press the button, it's going to start the motor. When you release the button, it's going to stop the motor. So when L up is pressed, there are different ways to do this, I know. This is the messier way to do it, but I think it makes the most sense for beginners. So when L up is pressed, you want to spin your arm up like that up and down. That's why we renamed those. So this would make a ton of sense as they're looking at it. And then when L down is pressed, spin the arm down. Okay? 
Now this will make the arm go, but it won't make it stop. We also want it to stop. That's important here. So when L up is released, whoops, zoinks. Let me give you a small note here before I move on. Once you've saved the project, the code automatically saves all the time. So it's possible that you could drag something out and then it will auto save it. And then if you don't undo that, you're like, oh, I'm going to screw everything up. I'm just going to close it. It might have already saved those changes. So as you are getting into a file, it's good to make multiple backups of that file. Maybe every day as you start, first thing you do, make a copy of the file because the saving is a little wonky. It will just, you will make a mistake and it will just save it right away. So that's just a brief side note. I'm here to help. I don't care. Fuck if that is somebody. Saving is not right. Anywho, so let me duplicate instead of delete. When LUP is released, we want the motor to stop. So we're going to say stop the arm. And when L down is released, we want to stop the arm. So when I let go of either L button, I'm going to stop it. Wait. Yes. Release, stop, release, stop. Good. Okay. So, I'm going to come up here to my wind startup block because there are overall settings for our arm motor that we need to look at. Um, the stopping. In general, for an arm, I'm going to set it to hold. If your arm is lifting something up and you want it to stay where it is when it stops, you have to set the stopping to hold. By default, it could be something else. I think it's coast by default. And that will pick it up, and then as soon as you let go, it will fall back down, and the children will be depressed because their arm isn't staying up. So set the stopping to hold. Uh, you can also set it to break, but if the cube is a little too heavy or something, it will slowly come down, and it will kind of try to stop it, but it won't try to get it back up to that original position. If you click on the help and the stopping, this will go through the three different modes they can use. Hold will cause the motor to come to an immediate stop and return to a stop position if moves. So it's going to fight to keep the cube where it is. It's not going to let it fall. Uh, or whatever object you're objecting. Okay. And, oops, sorry. This should be the arm here. I know you were yelling at me the whole time. And let's set the velocity for the arm, right? Let's set the arm velocity to 100%. I want to use full power usually from the start, and then see where that goes. So, when started, these are important settings to do when we start. Now, for the claw motor. Um, let's put that on E up, or is it F up and F down? Let's put it on E up and E down. When E up, spin the claw closed. And then when E up, stop the claw. I'm just going to do some duplicating, right? Whoops, I don't know how that came off. That was weird. Haha, <laughs> so weird. Uh, when E down is pressed, we're going to spin the claw open. And when E down is released, I'm doing this kind of weird, right? We're going to stop the claw. I need to use a lot of duplicating. Okay, so you can see how this method is very messy. There's a ton of blocks all over the place. It's already a hot mess. I already hate it. Um, you can combine those pressed and released by using a wait until block. Um, but again, for very beginners, this is something that they conceptually understand because they see L up is pressed, spin up. L up is released, stop. I think it's very easy for them to get it. Kids understanding what they are doing is priority one for me. Um, like I said, as you work with the students, you can help them clean it up and do some other things, and those are in all the examples. Okay. One thing that I like to do for the claw here, uh, let's look at these other settings as well, right? The stopping and the velocity. So, uh, um, the velocity for the claw, again, I'm going to put that to 100, the claw velocity to 100. The stopping is something you can play with, right? Because when the claw closes, you want it to hold. But I'm sure we've also been in a situation where the claw opens, and it's like open all the way, and our motor gets super hot. 
because once it opens, like it might be pushing against whatever it runs into as it opens, and it's pushing, and it's sitting there for 20 minutes pushing, and that's bad. I don't want the motor to work for 20 minutes just to open the claw when it's already open. We can change these brake modes depending on what we do. So, when we are closing the claw with E up, when we release the closing, I do want it to hold in place. Because if I'm grabbing onto something, I want it to hold. Right? When I release it, I don't want it to hold. I don't want the motor to work all the time. So I'm going to, whoops, should be claw. I can hear you yelling at me. I like that. I like it when you yell at me. It makes me better. It makes me so much better. So, when E down is released, after you open the claw, with E down, when E down is released, we're going to set the stopping to coast. Because if I'm releasing something with the claw, I don't want the motor working to hold it in that position. Again, that's how our motors get hot. And then they move, they're so hot. I don't want that to happen. Okay? So when I open the claw, when I push E down to open the claw, and then when I release E down from opening the claw, now the claw is on coast. Now the motor isn't working, it's not wasting electricity, it's not burning that motor out, it's just chilling, which is good. Um, so that's really all I would do, actually probably more than I would do with a student to start. Um, but you can see here it's all events, there are no forever loops, it is just looking for the controller and waiting for those events to happen. And uh, it's kind of a cool thing you can do here in blocks, I got it all on one screen. Um, like I said, the pressed and released, you could combine those together. So after spin arm down, you would wait until the button is released and then stop the arm. Puts these two together, makes it a little cleaner. That's nice. Um, but that just depends on, you know, how, how far you can take the kids down this road um, at a time. These can get incredibly complicated as well. And um, VEX code text for IQs it was supposed to be out in October, and they pushed that back to November. They've been really good on those dates in general, so um, here's hoping that'll be out soon. If we can take this and dump it into a text file, the students will hopefully already understand the concepts here, and then when we put it into the text file, then they will begin to understand the text, which is which is the skill we can give kids so they can make a ton of money and then pay into Social Security, so I'll have something on hold. I like that a little dark. Oh well. So, there's the code. I hope you um, can like it and learn from it and hope you're, anywho, give me questions or whatever.